nice to meet you all. This race that you've just been mentioned has got a few rules. Firstly, you have to have a team name. Our name was the South African Dung Beetles. <laughs> the Dung Beetles being my partner, John, um, Donovan Boschoff and myself. Paddling time, we used to, was allowed to start at 5 a.m. at sunrise and finish at 11 p.m. at sunset. An 18-hour day, and you chose where you wanted to cap, camp and wherever you stopped. You were given a compulsory list of equipment you had a, um, and enough food for two weeks. And our boat weighed 100 kgs. The Yukon is huge. It's a, there's a 52 kilometers lake. It's known as a real bitch. There's, <laughs> there's some really fast sections and some really slow sections. We paddled an, an average of 16 hours per day, and our daily average distance that we paddled was 210 kilometers. We burnt an average of 16,000 calories each per day. We would often sit in the boat for up to 12 hours in a session before we got out to stretch our legs. Besides bears, there were some other problems and dangers. Sleep deprivation. We averaged three and a half hours sleep per night. That was for seven nights on an average, often sleeping in thick mud and rocks. We were jet lagged at the start of the race and we were falling asleep at 10 o'clock in the morning. We anticipated this and took some caffeine pills, which we called blitz. <laughs> we started hallucinating. And Donovan, my partner, he saw this massive moose bull with huge antlers swimming underneath our boat at one stage. <laughs> the wind and rain was an issue. On day five, probably one of the most brutal days I've ever had, we paddled for 11 hours into this freezing sleet, thunderstorms, raging wind, 34, 30 to 40 kilometers headwind. It was, it was drastic. Temperatures were way below um, zero and uh, we got wet and our jackets that we thought were waterproof wouldn't, um, weren't and I got colder and colder and eventually we had to call our day short um, three hours before or after 15 hours um, and thank goodness we did because I was getting hypothermic and we found this unbelievable Davy Crockett wooden log cabin which saved the day. We both had lots of aches and pains. Donovan suffered from severe uh, wrist tendonitis. There was a strong USA team called Team Sam McGee. This one guy had a gray beard down here and when he eventually got out the boat, I understood why he paddled so well. He was six foot four, he had shoulders like this, not an ounce of fat on him. Anyway, they caught us with 800 kilometers to go and they passed us with hardly a word. It was incredible because we only saw one other competitor in 1,600 kilometers and now these guys don't want to talk to us. <laughs> I suggested we work together and we ride each other's wave and try and catch uh, the Australians who were in third place. And quite clearly he said to me, um, you can ride our wave as far back that we don't see you. So the message was very clear. But we picked up the challenge, the race was on. We raced neck and neck, sometimes half an hour apart. No one was going to quit. Three days later, we were still going flat out, and there was no punches pulled. Once they took a bad channel, and they would have ripped the bottom off their boat, and us, we shouted a warning to them, and they managed to save the day. They said thank you when they caught us, but they gave us no slack. <laughs> On the last night, we pulled into an island at quarter to 10, and 10 minutes later, they pulled into this island, 100 meters from us, set up the camp, we waved to each other, and I overheard them, say that they were going to get up at 3.30 and be gone by 4. You're not allowed to do that. The rule was you start at 5 o'clock. Anyway, we didn't believe that they would actually do that. Um, but when we woke up 4 o'clock, they were just about to launch their boat. And it was hectic. We, um, it was chaotic for us. We were trying to shove stuff in our boat. We hadn't eaten properly. And eventually we got going. They were gone. We had 200 kilometers to go. We weren't prepared. We weren't organized. We lived we lost half of our blitz for the day, and that was absolutely vital for us. <laughs> and um, not fully organized. We started chasing them, and an hour or two hours later, we caught them, but the effort took it out of us. We were in the Yukon Flats, 10, 15 kilometers wide, um, very slow current, um, and lots of channels. And Donovan had, had declared at the start of our morning, when we were so disorganized, and we are very organized people, that he didn't have the motivation to dice for 200 kilometers. Um, he didn't want to race, and, he was, and we were falling asleep while we were paddling. We were trying to ration out our blitz. At this point, we were battling to stay with, with, with them, and, but we could see in our garment that there was this big 10-kilometer curve of the river, and there was a, a four-kilometer sneak. So we discussed it. The rule is you stay with the fast water. We said we've got to do something desperate. So um, uh, we took the sneak, 
and it was a disaster. We got through the sneak, and there was um, the, the river, uh, this channel was, was shallow, and it was slow. We were trying to haul this 100 kg boat. Eventually, two, three kilometers, we came out into the main channel again, and they were gone. We saw their heads bobbing a kilometer and a half away. Our race was blown. It was over. Could not believe it. Um, and much to my surprise, I kind of accepted it. Um, we had done our best, and fifth place it was to be. We stopped for lunch at 2 p.m. for 10 minutes and a leg stretch. The first time we had stopped since um, what 4:30 and 5 o'clock in the morning. Um, we had we ate, and as we took off, I thought I heard voices, and uh, didn't take it in, take note. Paddled on, and 10 minutes later, who pulls up behind next to us is Team Sam McGee. This was this American team. Um, and what had happened, they had taken the wrong channel, and Donovan had been meticulous in his planning and had gone into Google Earth and had tracked our route um, very carefully, step by step, for 1,600 kilometers, and we took the main channel, and they'd, um, they had take, uh, taken another channel. Sorry for them. <laughs> anyway, I said to Donovan, Donovan, there is no ways in the world we are going to be coming fifth. We got, uh, I think at that point, there was 90 kilometers to go. <coughs> When we lost them on this big sneak, it was 140 kilometers to go. You know, Donovan got back on board, and we were fired up. We'd kind of, for the first time in three and a half days, we'd done the last few hours. We paddled at our own pace, and off we went again. And these guys picked up the challenge. It was crazy. There we are, 1,500 plus kilometers, and there we are just racing like you can't believe. We were scratching to stay with them, and uh, again, um, Donovan said, looking at the garment, he said, there's another big bend, exactly like the previous bend, 50 kilometers back. But it look looked like more water going down here. So he said, what do we do? So we looked and we assessed and we said, no, we've got to try this. So we backed off, they went off, and we took, went, took them to this channel, nice water, and it split. And uh, we took the, the channel the, um, on the left, went around the corner, and horrors of horrors, how was this, this rapid? We hadn't seen a rapid for 1,200 kilometers. And how was this rapid with water gushing through these big boulders? We had this 100 kg boat. We couldn't maneuver this thing. Our hearts were just sunk. Um, adrenaline was pumping because if we knew if we snapped or wrapped here and it would happen in a, in a heartbeat, we'd not only be stuck out there, but we could die out there. Anyway, we managed to get through this thing. We got onto the flat water. and we, It was a bit deeper than last time. We paddled like crazy and we came out. It was like, a, what was like exactly replay of, of what had happened earlier. We came out into the main channel. There they were, a kilometer, but behind us. We had 70 kilometers to go, and our tails were up. Donovan was roaring. Um, we started doing 10 kilometers interval at the same pace that we, we, we do the dice in Peter Marisburg on a Thursday, uh, eight kilometers at dice. We're doing this 10 kilometers interval snacking. Every time we checked, Sam McGee was chasing us, and we got uh, within 10 kilometers. Donovan was the star of the show. He tore his bicep. Like, this is the end of it. These guys are going to catch us. And he just kept on hauling. It was fantastic. Anyway, we pulled in just in front of them, just. And when they arrived, I went up to them and uh, congratulated them and said, thanks for the race. They were gracious in defeat and defeat and devastated. I said, I'll go to war with you guys. But um, they were devastated. They were hardcore guys, and they didn't like being in fifth place. For the record, teams one and two were a day in front of us, and team three was an hour ahead of us, and team Sam McGee was seven and a half minutes behind us, and the next boat was um, a day behind us. Anyway, it was one hell of a race within a race, um, 800 kilometers in three and a half days. And lastly, one for the bullies out there. I was told life begins at 40. I thought it began at 50, but I know for sure it starts at 60. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs>